Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning Dr. Sunshine. Johnson. You are the sunshine of our lives. My name is Melina Johnson. I teach at Rancho Milpitas Middle School, and I teach English language arts and the AVID elective. How many of you have a computer at home? So the lesson I'm going to teach is on safe online talk. I'll start with getting um, sort of some background information from the kids about their online usage, how often they're online, how much time they spend online. How many of you spend at least 30 minutes a day online? An hour? Two hours? Three hours? Oh my goodness, four hours. We're using Common Core Standards, and this has to do with reading for information in middle school. That's a big deal. Along with reading fiction, the students have to be able to read nonfiction, read for information. Can they provide evidence from the text? Can they make inferences based on um, what they've read, what they know, experiences that they've had? So my next question then is, who do you talk to? Our friends. You talk to your friends. I think that's the number one answer, right? How many of you would say you're talking to your friends? Okay. Who else are you talking to? Be honest. JD? Unknown people. Unknown people? Random people? How many of you have talked to people you've never met in person? It happens, right? It's expected. That's part of the beauty of being online is I can learn p from people that I've that I, I can't communicate with on a daily basis. We will go over the key vocabulary, make sure they understand the terms that I'll be using. So the first word is inappropriate. It's probably a word you've heard many times here at school, right? We talk about inappropriate behavior. Risky means potentially dangerous. Um, this term online predator refers to an adult who sort of stalks um, kids or teenagers on the internet. We'll go through the list of the warning signs. This is a big one. If they ask you to keep the friendship a secret or your communication online a secret. The kids have shared that they're really comfortable already with knowing that they shouldn't share personal information. But some of the more subtle things, some of the, the grooming that online predators tend to, to use, um, they're not as familiar with them. And we'll go on to the, the written scenarios. And in those, I want them to look for the warning signs that we've gone over. At every table, you have three pieces of construction paper. You have a green one, a yellow one, and a red one. What do you associate these colors with? A stoplight. Green means go. Go. Red means stop. Stop. And yellow means slow down. It means what? <coughs> slow down. Yes. When you're online communicating with someone, these these signs come up. These things happen. Do you give it the green light? Keep communicating. Do you slow down and say maybe I need to be more cautious, or do you stop and, and end all communication? I'm going to give you about a minute or so to discuss with your group uh, which color light you're going to apply to that situation. And I want you to be able to explain to me why you chose that color light. I want them to sort of put themselves in the place of that, that character. What would you do if that was you? You know, would, would you continue on in that conversation? Would you stop? Would you tell an adult? Discuss with your group and decide. And they still met in person. they met in person. He's older. Like, what if he's like, he's, he's done that before or something. So it, it still seems sort of odd that the adult wants to friend the 14-year-old. The I think the curriculum is extremely effective because we're not approaching it in a way that we're saying, being online is bad. Stay away from the computer. Stay away from chat rooms. Are you yellow? Yeah, yellow. yellow. Everything's high tech now, so we're online more often and we get more careless of what we're doing. So I think that if we have these lessons, it'll like remind us and caution us. Why yellow? Um, because him asking for the age is still one of the warning signs. Okay, one of the warning signs, asking for personal information, right? Very good. I think some of the kids okay. understand that, okay, maybe this is a conversation I shouldn't have anymore, but they're not taking that extra step to tell someone else about it. Um, so someone knows that they've had this experience. What if he does this often? Because it's just that he wasn't Yeah, but if he did something else, like ask for personal information, that would be like more red ish yellow. It's good for people to be learning about this kind of stuff because it does happen in the real world and it's, it's common, it's an everyday thing and people should try and avoid that and stay safe. This group had red? Why red? Well, because even though it says didn't get too personal, she's still venting to him about like 
what's going on in her life and like what makes her mad or whatever. So if it's like at home and at school, then he's gonna know who those people are and then find out more that way without straight up asking her. Okay, so because she's venting, she might actually give personal information accidentally. I'd say we're teaching them to be cautious, not to be scared. Because they can appreciate that we're not telling them don't do this thing that you love to do, they're willing to listen. Today he writes, can I show you a pic? Before she types a response, he says again, keep this private, okay? I like you, Kat. I hope you like me too. <coughs> Everybody, hold up your color. <laughs> if we can teach them to use these tools safely and in a positive way, they'll be okay. That, that they will make the right decisions. When, when things are, seem inappropriate or risky or awkward, that they're gonna back out of that situation.